Tennessee's scariest game on the schedule, not named Georgia, is? I'll go with that uh, September matchup in Norman against Oklahoma. Uh, I'm not sure how good Oklahoma will be. I think it always will attain a certain level. The program is that good. Um, though you couldn't tell it in 22. Um, I, I guess the fact that it's on the road at a school where the fans turn out well and will pack the stadium would be pretty loud, I would think. Uh, just Tennessee's road record makes me wonder about that game. And I know Oklahoma's breaking in a new quarterback, uh, but Jackson Arnold passed for 361 yards in a bowl game. He also threw, threw three interceptions, but I see – a great potential with that guy. And I just think unless T Tennessee's defense has improved markedly and maybe it will be, uh, they could have trouble in that game. John, I have not been to Norman, Oklahoma. I'm assuming you have throughout your travels. How difficult does that rank as, as, as far as places to play? Well, it, it, I was there for afternoon games both times. I, Way back in the mid-80s, I covered Oklahoma-Nebraska game there. Quite a different environment than when Tennessee played there under Butch Jones. That was kind of like the Oklahoma people. They, the fans, though they packed the stadium, the fans seemed very congenial, uh, not hostile at all, kind of like Missouri fans when they first joined the league. And I think that was because, well, they knew they were going to beat Tennessee. And it just wasn't. But I think you get them in a big game atmosphere, and I think this will be a big game. I think Oklahoma fans will step up. I think it'll be a tough environment. All right, Caleb, what about you? The scariest game not named Georgia is? You know, I was going to come into this saying Oklahoma. Um, and I because uh, the biggest reason is because it's a road game. I, I'm with John. I don't really fully believe in Oklahoma as a team, but be, it being a road game made me want to see them. But then I'm like, I don't believe them in them as a team. And Tennessee plays Kent State the week before. So they'll really be preparing for Oklahoma for two weeks. So honestly, because of that, I think I still have to go Alabama. Even though it's at home and even though I don't think Alabama is going to be as good as they have been in the past and they should beat Alabama. I, it, It's not because of Alabama. It's because outside of Georgia, I can't see a game on the schedule that Tennessee should lose. Okay, I, I don't think it's Alabama, and we're going to dive into that uh, topic here in just a little bit, what Alabama will do under Kalen DeBoer. Um, John, how winnable do you think that Alabama game is? I mean, a lot of the – and we're going to get into a lot of the big-picture macro issues that Alabama is having in this transition from Saban to DeBoer. A lot of those are going to take impact in 25, 26. Some will take impact this in, in 2024, but – just from what Alabama has been through in this off season, how difficult of an opponent are they as compared to if Nick Saban's still pumping away and recruiting five-star prospects? Well, yeah, I mean, they do have a, a solid uh, base with uh, Saban's recruiting, but the fact that the games at Neyland stadium in Tennessee won two years ago there, the fans will be as revved up for that game as they were two years earlier, as they were for the Georgia game last year. I, uh, Neyland Stadium has become one of the best home field advantages in college college football. Didn't used to be there, even though it was uh, it had a large crowd, but it wasn't as vocal as animated as the crowd is now. Um, I, I just think I, I really like that, maybe more so because of Tennessee's home field advantage. But I think Tennessee will be a better team, and uh, than it was last year. I'm not. It might even be as good as 22. Uh, and I just don't know about Alabama, but I don't really like what Alabama Alabama has done in the transfer portal. I, I mean, you know, the way Nick Saban recruited there, he didn't need a lot of help in the transfer portal, but he did go out and get Jameer Gibbs from Georgia Tech. And, and think what that Alabama team, I guess that was the 22 team. Mm -hmm. uh, he was the, the big play guy for Alabama. And Alabama didn't have that last year. Uh, and I don't know if it'll have it this year. Kalen DeBoer, when you look at offense, Washington, to me, last year, was stronger in every area than Alabama will be um, will be this year under DeBoer. 
Yeah. And, and, and I get, are you saying that's a year to year thing or that that's you think? Well, that's I, don't, I, don't know. I don't know, but I think Kalen DeBoer doesn't have SEC experience and I love his, his winning percentage is otherworldly. Uh, but I can't, I, I think it, when it comes to recruiting to you, it helps sometimes to know what you're up against what you're up against in the SEC specifically. Kalen Bohr doesn't have that experience. And maybe guys that can win in, for you in other leagues uh, might not quite can pull it off in the SEC. And that's, you know, I. but I do like Kalen DeBoer's track record. I like what he's done offensively. I thought it hurt that he lost his offensive coordinator. I wonder how that will go in the transition. So I just have a, a lot of questions about this program and how he will fit into the SEC. And also I had questions anyway, even if Nick Saban would have come back. I know Alabama made the playoff, but I, I just wonder offensively, I'm looking for playmakers. And uh, Jalen Milrow's a playmaker, but I don't know who else is. Well, it's funny you bring up that Gibbs because they had – they had, they had some good playmakers. They were just young, and I don't think they knew when and how to step up at the time when Gibbs was able to step in, um, and then they were kind of able to grow a little bit. Portions of the program brought to you by our good friends at uh, Campbell, Cunningham, Taylor, and Hahn. Enjoy life better when you see better. Local vision service for LASIK, cataract surgery, and regular eye examination, ccteyes.com, ccteyes.com. I guess I should say something different so that I would throw a big wrench in it. And it's a great argument, but Caleb, I can't go any other direction than Alabama or at Oklahoma. I will go at Oklahoma, even though, you know, I'm not a big uh, Brent Venables guy. I think what this underscores is that Tennessee's two most challenging games, and John differs on this a little bit. So we might want to give him the final word have question marks at coaching right now i'm not sold on venables i'm not sold on DeBoer, but that's a pretty good position for tennessee to be in considering they were the coaching joke just four years ago yeah um i, I wanted to talk a little bit about oklahoma specifically because my pick of alabama wasn't uh, about alabama itself it was about oklahoma John, I just think Oklahoma was not that good of a team last year. I think it's I think it's a massively overrated team. I think they cashed in on a very weak Big 12, as did Texas. And I know, I know, everybody is going to – everybody keeps coming at me when I say this. Well, Texas beat Alabama in September. And it's the, like that was not – You got the voice, John. Consider yourself very lucky when you get that, the that, voice. That was, that was not the same Alabama team that ended up – making the college football playoff. We all know that that was not a great Texas team. And that Oklahoma team was not that great either. They got a lucky win over Texas that they didn't really deserve. And I, I, I just got to And I think Brent Venables makes a lot of look, John, he made a football IQ segment three times last year. He makes a lot of basic in-game mistakes. And I think when he gets to the sec, that's going to get exposed more. And even though it's a road game, and I know Tennessee has so many issues on the road. We've seen – we've all seen it with our eyes. Josh Hypo can pretend that it's not a thing, but Tennessee has problems on the road with this so, offense. But. So let me ask you this, John, along the lines of what Caleb's saying. If you're Adams University and you're hiring a coach, where would that Venable staff – and I'm talking the entire staff. Where would that rank among coaching staffs in the SEC that you would hire? Fifth? Well, I mean, I just don't know the depth of Oklahoma's coaching staff. Um, Brent Venables, to me, was a very questionable hire. Agreed. I, I just, you know, he's been a really good defensive coordinator. Uh, so was Jeremy Pruitt. Uh, I, so I really wondered about that hire. But I thought I liked the way Oklahoma bounced back last year from the 2022 season. Um the thing about Oklahoma is that it always seems to have offensive playmakers. Yeah. It, it just, it just does. It's one of the, it's kind of like Southern California with a better, better track record overall uh, in that respect. 
Um, so in, in our, that's why in big, in, in big games, I kind of like the team with the playmakers because everything kind of could balance out, be a t- close game. And some guys are just going to make a play that turns a game. I think the jury's still out on Brent Venables. And uh, <laughs> you could go from being pretty good there at Oklahoma to being on the hot seat to being gone because Oklahoma will not put up with, yeah, they're pretty good. Well, and, Think about it. Oklahoma jumping, had one. And you're jumping huh? in the SEC too. So, I mean, what, what, seems yeah, there's, there, what seems good now in 14 months could be you're kicking rocks looking for a job. Well, I'm, I mean, Oklahoma fans weren't thrilled with uh, Lee, with Lincoln Riley. So let's just point I mean, this even out. though they were making the playoff, they want a championship. They haven't had a championship since Josh Heupel was their quarterback. Ouch. So let's just point this out um, because, John, you can laugh at me because Tennessee almost hired him in 2017. But um, given what he's got, he's got an underrated, very experienced program this year that people think will compete for the ACC title. Could NC State be tougher than Oklahoma for Tennessee this year? Dave Doran. Dave Doran. Who are you taking, Dave Doran or Brent Venables? Never boring Dave Doran. <laughs> I, I, I don't know who I would take <laughs> in that chess match. Um, but again, I still like Oklahoma because of home field and because of the playmakers. I like NC State more than it got Grayson McCall at quarterback. It added some some other players in transfer portal that I think could be help, very helpful with this its offense. I do think when I start looking at the next game, if we get get past the Alabama um, Oklahoma debate, uh, then it's probably NC State. Uh, I think that's Tennessee's toughest game. But I think one of the things that comes out of this, the way we're talking about the schedule, I mean. I don't think anybody thought Tennessee had an overly rigorous schedule in 2023. That was one of the reasons I thought it could go 10 and two. Um, Now I look at this schedule kind of get the same vibe. I mean, this is not an overly demanding schedule uh, because I mean, Alabama is still not what we think of as vintage Alabama. Yes. Georgia will probably be vintage Georgia. (laughs) 